Hello, today's video is by request. It is on matrices and how do we operate matrices on the Casio Prism. So uh, we're going to go into the Run Matrix menu to take a look at how matrices work. Let me get rid of some of the stuff that I have on here from earlier. So um, there's a lot of places where we can see matrices on the Prism. We got the normal if you like storing your matrices for use later on, you can go ahead and store the matrix. I'll just go, let's say, a 2 by 2 This is the traditional way that you've seen how to do matrices. Fill in the information. There it is. The matrix has been stored. Not a whole lot of excitement there, but the really nice thing about this is I can do matrices on the fly right on the home screen here. I just went into uh, options. I can go into matrix. I've got matrices all over. I've got matrices in the options key. i got a matrix button to call up matrices above the number 2. If I go back and exit, I've got the quick matrix storage and if I go into the math menu I can actually pull up another matrix so I want to do matrices on the screen which is really helpful to be able to see what the matrix is that you put in instead of hiding it under matrix A which sometimes you may want to do alright so rows and columns let's go with a two row three column matrix there it is and now I could fill it with fractions I can fill it with decimals, I can fill it with mixed numbers, I can fill it with whatever your problem wants it to fill it in with. So let's just fill it in with a couple of digits here. I'll throw in a fraction. Let's go with the one-third. Whoops, I keep forgetting I have to toggle over and not execute. And let's go with a uh, like negative five. All right, now there it is. Nothing exciting happened there, but now what's really nice is I can do things like multiply the matrix. So let me just multiply this whole matrix by five, for example. If I said five times that matrix, there's my answer. So I get to see what was my operation that got me the answer that I'm looking at. I could have gotten rid of that times gives me the same answer. Division doesn't make sense, so we're not going to divide that. We can't add them. If we try to add them, we'll get an error. Let's try to add these together. If we want to do some more advanced matrix operations, let's say we wanted to look at reduced row echelon form of, of that matrix. We want to do some row reduction on it. This is where I go into the options menu, into my matrix menu. I can do determinants, I can augment a matrix, transpose a matrix, turn a matrix into a list, pull up an identity matrix, the dimensions, I can fill a matrix. And there's my RREF. Execute. And there we have it. If you uh, like to do A inverse times B, if you're doing Algebra 2, for example, I'll, I'll exit back out. I'll go into Math. I'll say Matrix 2 by 2. Let's go with a 1. I did it again. 1, 2, 2, 6. And I'll say that's an inverse because I want to see the inverse of this matrix. There's my inverse key, so I hit Shift times matrix B, which is going to be two rows, one column. And let's go with uh, six and, oops, I did it again. 6 and 7, or 5 and 7. 
there we have it. Again, if you wanted to do something like just looking at the inverse of a matrix, if you're trying to discover what a, the inverse of a matrix looks like, there's your inverse matrix. Great discussion with students right there. Uh, more advanced matrix operations. Let's go into matrix again. We'll go into the matrix m menu. Let's go into options. <coughs> Excuse me. Matrix. If you want to do the determinant of this matrix right above here. I'll capture that. Oh, I don't want to capture. Let me clip it. I will clip that one. I'll come down and paste it right after that. Well, that's interesting. I was, I was looking up an address on Google earlier. That's interesting. I didn't know it could do that. Very interesting. But if I wanted to do a determinant, you could have saw me do that. If I go into the matrix menu, or actually into the matrix storage. You can delete a matrix, you can find the dimension of the matrix. CSV files, you can also bring those in as CSV files. So let's see, what else? The matrix button above the number 2 just pulls up the name, so if I wanted to do, for example, matrix A, which I had stored earlier, I can now recall it, so you could still do all the stuff you did before with matrices. But I think the biggest advantage of these matrices is that I can do them straight on the screen. Adding, subtracting, multiplying, inverses, um, reduce row, echelon form. You can do row reductions. You can add and subtract rows and columns. That's a more advanced feature if you wanted to go there. You can always go there. But uh, that's just a quick overview of matrices on the prism. And you can do them right on the, on the home screen here. And you get the added advantage of being able to use all your fancy keys so that uh, you don't need to worry too much about the fact that your matrix has fractions and it may not look like fractions. Or you have some funny looking symbols in your matrix. You could still do that. So if I could just do a 2 by 2 I wanted to do a really weird mixed number. 2 square root. Oh, I want to do that in the next one. 3. And then I'll go like the square root of 5. Make it imaginary. Make it complex. <clears throat> And let's see if it'll if it can handle taking an inverse. I don't know if it will. Should be interesting. Oh, well, there you go. That is a very interesting. It actually did find a, an inverse matrix for that one. That's very interesting. I didn't think it would. All right. So that's a quick overview for matrices. Somebody had requested that I do a matrix video. So hopefully that's helped a little bit. Keep those requests coming. Um, see Math Run, put a comment, put a question. Also on Facebook and Twitter and TeacherTube if you don't have access to YouTube. So that's again, that's a quick matrix video for you. Thank you. Take care.